This right here, ladies and gentlemen, is a PXN V10 force feedback racing wheel. People over at PXN were kind enough to send me one of these beauty to test it out and I said why not. So in today's video I will share my honest opinion about the PXN V10 and tell you everything you need to know to decide if this wheel is the one you're looking for. And there's no better way to test it out than on some Forza Horizon, so let's jump straight into the action. So from the first impression, the steering wheel is behaving pretty similar to my Logitech wheel, but there are still some differences between them. Let's start off with the material that the wheel is made of. It's made of a, some kind of a fake Alcantara leather, but once you get your hands on, it's a really great feeling and I really love it. But comparing it to a more premium real leather on a Logitech G923, the winner is obvious. When setting it up, I really loved how simple the process was. It's literally a plug and play. But don't forget to install the latest drivers from the PXN website once you have your wheel plugged in. A huge advantage of our other wheels is the customizable setup. Having the ability to change the tilt of the wheel, adjusting the pedal to the desired angle and adjusting the pedal strength as well is really awesome. And especially when compared to some Logitech wheels where brake pedal is as stiff as a rock, here you can adjust the stiffness and it's really awesome. Now the most important aspect is, how is the feeling playing with this wheel? I'm gonna be straightforward, the feeling playing with this wheel is pretty much similar to the Logitech wheels. The force feedback strength is pretty much the same, I think I noticed is the wheel motor is a little bit quieter than on the Logitech wheel, which is a plus, but overall feeling after playing for a few days with this wheel, it's really neck to neck with the Logitech wheel. And for an entry level wheel that costs 270 bucks, that has the ability to bring the simulation experience to the palm of your hands, I think this is really a great deal. Especially having some competition among the entry level racing wheels, for us gamers, it's only a plus. But don't expect too much. If you want even greater simulation experience, you should consider getting a Thrustmaster TS300. But if this is your first wheel and you're just getting started with the sim racing, then PXN V10 is perfect for you. And now I'm gonna tell you about some flaws about the wheel or things I don't like about this wheel. And I'm gonna start off with pedal shifters. When I was unboxing the wheel, I immediately saw how cheap the pedal shifters looked like. And once you're in a game and you start using pedal shifters, the whole feeling and the sound they make is just disgusting. If they would just paint them black and make the feeling of them a little bit harder, not as soft as they are now, it would be much better. The next thing I dislike are the buttons on the wheel. They again feel really cheap and they just look out of place. But that just may be me. Maybe to some of you the buttons would look cool. But I have to praise the age shifter you get together with the wheel, which is a huge advantage over other wheel setups. For example, for Logitech wheels, you have to buy the shifter separately, and it's not cheap, I think it costs around 70 bucks. Yeah, it maybe looks cooler and the design is a bit better than this one from PXN, but hey, you're saving 70 bucks. And the shifter works really good, except of one problem. When shifting into 5th gear, so from 4th to 5th or downshifting from 6th to 5th gear, the shift knob gets stuck before entering the 5th gear, so you're ending up in neutral. And I don't know if this is the case for just this shifter, or is this maybe a general problem for PXN shifters, so yeah, it's a little bit disturbing at first, but once you get used to it, you will sense when the gear knob gets stuck, so just give it a little harder push to go into a 5th gear. Another great ability that the wheel has to offer is the ability to change the wheel input. And by that I mean this home button. If the light above the home button is red color, that means that the wheel is in the D input mode. This means that the game supports force feedback. But if you find yourself in a game that does not support the force feedback options, then you need to hold and press the home button for 3 seconds and the light will change to purple and the wheel will go into X input mode which is suitable for the games that do not support force feedback. This is a great feature that comes to a hand if you decide to go play a Need for Speed 
that don't have a force feedback. But if you ever played any Need for Speed game on a steering wheel, you know that they are not meant to be played on a whole 900 degree operational angle. And people over at PXN were smart enough to predict that and they incorporated a little switch button at the back side of the wheel with which you can change the degree from 900 degree to 270 degree. And the game plays really well with the wheel as well. If you haven't played it like that yet, you should go and try it. And it's especially nice once you get into a police chase and smash some cops. And I was amazed how great the wheel worked in both scenarios. In a world of sim racing and in a world of an arcade racing game. And yeah, I know you will say that the Forza Horizon 5 is far from a sim racing game, so to calm you down, I also tested the wheel in Assetto Corsa. And one of my absolute favorite things to do in Assetto Corsa is, of course, cutting up in traffic. And no, we are not in a no hazy server, we are in a swim server, because public no hazy servers are total crap, but more of that in another video. And if you're cutting with the controller, man, go get a damn steering wheel. Especially this PXN for 270 bucks, you get basically everything you need, and it's a whole different world than on the controller. The only thing I'm missing out is a shift indicator which sometimes comes in handy on a Logitech wheel. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention there is also a PXN wheel app for iOS and Android in which you can mess with your wheel settings, for example, you can change game spring, damp friction force and so on, you can also mess up with your pedals, you can change curve for your clutch, brake or accelerator. And to sum up my thoughts about the PXN V10 force feedback racing wheel, it's a great wheel for anyone who is considering getting started with the sim racing or even if you just want to play some arcade racing games such as Need for Speed with the steering wheel, this is a great option and you're not spending a whole fortune. For 270 bucks you get a great wheel that you can attach in your desk or set it up on a standalone sim setup. You get a decent age shifter and an awesome pedals that are easily customizable to your PXN app on your phone. And the wheel work with whole sets of games. I tested it out on a Forza Horizon 5, a set of Corsa and Need for Speed Most Wanted, but it also works for Euro Truck Simulator, Formula F1 and bunch of other games. And as I already said, when comparing the wheel to the Logitech G923 or G920, there isn't much setting these two apart. It's true that the Logitech is more premium than PXN, but because of that it's also a little bit more expensive. But at the end of the day it will be up to you to decide which wheel would you prefer. So with all that said, I will drop some links to the PXN V10 wheel down in the description so you can go check it out. And again, I'm just sharing my opinion and I'm not saying which is better. And with all that said, smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't yet, and as always, have a great day and I will see you in the next one.